Need to connect your router to your VPN provider with OpenVPN, but just can't seem to figure it out? Well, you landed on the right video. Today, we'll be setting up an OpenVPN client on OpenWRT. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in this episode, we're setting up OpenVPN on OpenWRT. We've already explored WireGuard as a VPN client on a router, but that option might not work for everyone. While WireGuard has exploded in terms of its usage, especially with its integration into the Linux kernel, it's certainly not used everywhere. While many providers do support WireGuard, you'll find that OpenVPN support is mature within the VPN marketplace. Given that, we'll start exploring OpenVPN by first setting it up as a client on OpenWRT as a network-wide VPN. Before we set it up, let's take a high-level look into OpenVPN. The OpenVPN protocol was created in 2001 by James Yonan and released under the new GPL version 2 license as the first open source VPN protocol. Given its usage, it's become a versatile and widely used solution known for its robustness and cross-platform compatibility. It's been a go-to choice due to its flexibility and support for various encryption protocols. When compared to the WireGuard protocol, also an open source VPN solution and released under the new GPL version 2 license, its focus is much broader. OpenVPN is more feature rich, including support for authentication, certificates, key exchange, layer 2 networking, and extensible plugins. WireGuard, on the other hand, has much more narrow focus. Simply put, it focuses on speed, security, and portability. It does not have the features noted above nor are there plans to add them. Its intent is to be used as a base for developers, such as TailScale, to build on top of for those additional features, rather than include those features within the protocol. Because of this, it also has a much smaller, more easily auditable code base that is less likely to have security vulnerabilities. While I prefer WireGuard, I still use OpenVPN on occasion where its features are useful for my situation and is actually how I learned to set up my first home network VPN. Let me know what you use to set up your first VPN, or if this is your first time doing so in the comments below. Now that we know a little bit about OpenVPN, let's go ahead and set it up. For this video, I'll be using OpenWT 23.05 and Molvad as my VPN provider. To get started, let's log into our router's Lucy interface. After logging in, we're going to need some packages. In particular, we'll need OpenVPN OpenSSL, Lucy App OpenVPN, and OpenSSL Util. We can install them as we typically do under System, then Software. With these packages installed, we're ready to move to configuration. At this point, you'll need to grab the configuration file from your VPN provider. It should come as a file with a .ovpn extension. Let's grab ours from Malvad now. Using this file, we'll upload it to the router to configure our OpenVPN instance. Let's do a quick refresh of Lucy to make sure the package is loaded. Then on the top, you'll see VPN. Click the dropdown and then click OpenVPN. Here, we configure our OpenVPN client and server, but for this video, we're focusing on the client configuration, which is all taken care of by our VPN provider. We could ignore the sample configurations for now, but in the future, there'll be a great reference for setting up an OpenVPN server. So get subscribed to see that video when it comes out. To upload the OVPN config, 
Go to the bottom of the screen under OVPN Configuration File Upload. Click the Browse button. In the File Upload pop-up, navigate to the OVPN file we just downloaded and click Open. On the left-hand side, let's name our config after our provider and destination. In this case, it's Molvad JP TYO for Tokyo, Japan. Then click Upload on the right-hand side. Next, we'll modify the config for this instance we just created. Click the Edit button to the right. We now see the config options generated by our VPN provider. I'm not going to review these options in depth, since this was intentionally created by our VPN provider. In a follow-up video, I'll cover this when we need to create our own configuration file. In the meantime, you can follow the link in the description to learn more about these config options. For this instance, we'll need to make one change to get this working, as required by the VPN provider. We'll need to edit the auth hyphen user hyphen pass line to a file path of a credential file. Next to this line, type in forward slash etc forward slash openvpn forward slash malvad underscore jp underscore tyo dot auth. In the text box below, we'll define the credentials that go into this credential file. For Molvad, the credentials are simply the account number for the username, and then M as the password on a new line. Once done, click Save. With the configuration complete, now we can start our instance. Go back to the section before this by navigating to VPN, then Open VPN using the menu bar at the top. Then check off Enabled next to our instance. Click the Start button to the right, and then click Save and Apply below for the instance to start. Now we should have a working TUN0 or TUN0 interface running. Let's refresh to make sure it shows up. Now let's create the tunnel interface in Lucy. From here, navigate to Network, then Interfaces. At the bottom, click Add New Interface. In the pop-up, give the interface a name. I'll name it the same as my instance, Molvad underscore JP underscore TYO. Next, change the protocol to Unmanaged. Lastly, for device, choose TUN0. Then click Create Interface, then click Save, then Save and Apply. With this interface set up, we're just about ready to start using it. But first, let's create a new firewall zone and add this interface to it. Click on Network, then Firewall. At the bottom, click Add. Let's call this zone VPN underscore FW. For input, output, and forward chains, leave them with their default values. For masquerading, check that off. For covered networks, choose the Molvad underscore JP underscore TYO. Then, for allow forward from source zones, choose the LAN zone. With that, we're done with all the changes to the zone, so click Save, then Save and Apply. There's a few more things we can do now that aren't necessary, but can improve the experience of using the VPN and to help mitigate DNS leaks. In particular, We'll be setting our DNS server to the IP address provided by our VPN provider and ignoring the DNS server assigned by our ISP. I'll be assigning the DNS server's IP both on the LAN side 
and via DHCP, but technically, you don't need both. Just one or the other. First, while we're here, let's cover what Malvad refers to as a kill switch. What this does is prevents any outbound traffic from directly going over the WAN, ensuring it only goes over the VPN, even if the VPN is down. That means if the VPN service stops working, the traffic simply won't have a way out, and your requests will time out. So if you need service, even if the VPN goes down, you might not want to make this change. In addition, if you do or plan to use split tunneling, this is not something you want to do. For those who want to split tunnel, watch my video linked in the top right hand corner. To make the kill switch, edit the LAN zone. In here, we'll remove WAN from allow forward to destination zones. Here, we should only have our Malvad VPN zone we just created. When complete, click Save, then Save and Apply. With the kill switch complete, we'll move to mitigating DNS leaks. First, let's cover DNS assignments over DHCP. To do this, go to Network, then Interfaces. Now, we'll edit the LAN interface and go to the DHCP Server tab, Make Our Changes. In the pop-up, under the Advanced Settings tab, we'll see DHCP options at the bottom. Here, type in 6,10.8.0.1 and then click the plus button to add it. This is the DNS server provided by Malbad over this VPN tunnel. Now, any new device that joins the LAN network, it will use the 10.8.0.1 as its DNS server instead of the router's IP address as done by default. You may want to be cautious here because if you use local DNS resolution for devices in your network, this will bypass your local DNS server and as a result, you will lose access to internal services over DNS and would have to refer to them directly by IP. Let's close the pop-up by clicking Save. To set the LAN's DNS server, click Edit next to the LAN interface once more. In the pop-up under Advanced Settings tab, you'll see Use Custom DNS Servers. Here, add the IP address 10.8.0.1 or the DNS server IP given by your VPN provider, then click Plus. This simply tells your router to use that IP address for DNS resolution, basically as its upstream DNS server for any requests it receives. We're done here, so let's click Save. We should be done. However, I had to complete one more step as I still had DNS leaks after these steps. We'll be telling our WAN interface to not use the DNS servers provided by the ISP. To do this, edit the WAN interface. Under the Advanced Settings tab, uncheck the Use DNS Servers Advertised by Peer. This will simply ignore the DNS servers given by our ISP and force the router to use the DNS servers we've assigned above. To complete these changes, exit this pop-up by clicking Save and then clicking Save and Apply. With all this, we're done. For good measure, let's reboot our system. We can do that by clicking System, Reboot, then Perform Reboot. Now that we've rebooted, 
let's make sure our VPN works the way we expect it to. First, log back into Lucy. And on the network page, let's see if our VPN interface has RX and TX traffic. Looks like it does, which confirms we have successful communication with the VPN provider. Let's now check if the routing is working as expected. Go to your browser and visit ifconfig.me. Here, I see an IP address that does not match my public IP address, which shows me my traffic was routed over the VPN. Let's make sure I don't have any DNS leaking. I'll do that by visiting malvad.net forward slash check. As you see on the page, all our checks are lighting up green, meaning we're using the VPN and we're free from DNS and WebRTC leaks, confirming to us our configuration is working. As we just experienced, Setting up an OpenVPN client on a router is not too difficult, whether it be WireGuard or OpenVPN. Our VPN providers give us the configuration files needed to make it almost plug and play. At the same time, we learn more about networking during this process, expanding what our VPN service can do, such as accessing our home network remotely. On the topic of remote access to our home network over a VPN, we're likely to do that over many different connections and devices, such as our phones. We definitely want fast and reliable service. And I can say from personal experience that Mint Mobile has given me just that. I'd like to thank them for partnering with me on this video so I can use their quality service for my network shenanigans. Using their service, I had a great experience browsing the web, streaming videos, like YouTube of course, and connecting to VPNs, including my own. I could accomplish my routine tasks at the low cost of their unlimited plan at $15 a month. Signing up took about 15 minutes, and I got a SIM in the mail only because I wanted one. To get on their network faster, you can opt for eSIM, and within minutes, you'll be using their network without breaking the bank. So if you're looking to change your service provider, save some money, or want a secondary line, give Mint Mobile a try by using my link in the description below. It helps support the channel so I can continue to make easy-to-follow educational content like this. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Need to set up WireGuard on a router? Watch this video here while I break it down step by step. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.